back to the 832 podcast. I'm with my dad, Josh Still, again. And before we start getting into the episode today, um, I'm part of the beta club at my school, and we're doing an event, even though COVID, um, that I'm fairly excited about called Deck Your Cars. Gonna go decorate our cars. Uh, people are gonna come through, look at them, hopefully have a good time. That's the plan. And anyone else in the Sprayberry community, or goes to Sprayberry if you're watching this, um, it's kind of similar to a trunk or treat, as I understand it, where we'll, uh, and trunk or treat is where, you know, you have candy in the back of your car, kids come around, yay, candy, except Christmas, so I'm looking forward to it. Right. And with that out of the way, we're going to be doing our third installment of the Misleading Ministry um, series, Predestination. Now, before we got got into this, I wanted to, I was talking with my dad, and I was was talking about how like there's a lot of Calvinist stuff that pops up on my Instagram, mm -hmm. and a lot of it I agree with. Mm -hmm. I'm like reading through stuff, a lot of the Calvinist stuff I agree with, but the okay. bone I choke on mm -hmm. is predestination, and that's what we're talking about today, specifically that. And um, for for me. Predestination means um, you don't get to choose whether or not you're going to heaven. God's already chosen you. And once God's chosen you, you can't be unchosen. So once you're saved, you're always saved. And there's no way to lose salvation after that point is how it's been interpreted. Right. And that's also what I've read and how mm -hmm. I've understood it. Right. So um, the flip side of that coin is Arminianism. Uh, which is the um, basically the, the they call it a liberal reaction to Calvin's theology, and it's from um, Jacob Ar Arminius, I believe it was. Uh, it was Arminian, right? Hey, and that, that, that sounds about right. Right, but um, it's. Not to be confused, I always got it mixed up with Armenian, like the the country. Right. <laughs> but that's not where it comes from. It's actually a guy's from a guy's name, just like Calvinism. Right. Uh, and with Arminianism, here's why people don't like our, the Arminian theology. It's because it led to things that I don't think it ever was supposed to lead to. And that would be things like, I don't have a, a lot of problems with the Methodist church as a whole. John Wesley was a pretty good dude overall. People put a little too much emphasis on education. But here we are. He's, he was one of the founders of the Methodist church. And they were influenced by Arminius. And, you know, for the most part, they do all right. Except there are branches of the Methodist Church who are fond of, um, what's the word? Ordaining, uh, actively, openly, unrepentantly homosexual pastors of their church. Churches. It's, uh, so... Right, unapologetically is the big problem. Not, well, I mean, the... the, the yeah, it's... Of it, anybody going to a church, unapologetically is the big problem. Right. Especially so when one's a pastor. Um, and it's it's my opinion that anybody engaged in constant unrepentant sin uh, just doesn't have a, a place at church because they are cheapening and abusing grace and also... It's always been, so obedience has always been a part of salvation, like since the beginning. Right. Uh, Jesus is very clear about that. If you love me, keep my commandments. Well, that's obedience. Right, and that ties in a little bit, like with the Calvinist, the Calvinist thing, where it's like you do good works to show that you are saved, not to. At least that was part of what not I was. Not to stay reading. saved. Not to stay saved to show that you are saved. Which, Which we can what, agree on. We, yeah. we that makes sense. 
Well, it, you don't do good works to get saved. It's to show that you have the love of God, so you are going to show that love of God to others. Right. And um, everything should be done because we are saved, not so that we can be. Because right. salvation is not as a part of something that we do. So the crux of the problem between Calvinism and Arminianism is, is Calvin didn't seem to think that free will could exist for human beings um, in harmony with God having sovereignty. Now, I don't... As in, if God is sovereign, he makes all the decisions we don't. Right. But that's... I'm not going to say I was smarter than John Calvin. I'm going to say that I, I don't understand that viewpoint. Because... Um, you know, as a father, uh, I have a lot of sovereignty over your life. I can tell you to do a lot of things. And there are a lot of things I can do that a lot of people wouldn't necessarily agree with that are definitely legally within my right to do as it pertains to the decisions that you make. Right. Now, just because I have that power doesn't mean I don't have that power when I don't use that power. Right. So, you know, I could tell you what to wear, how to how to dress, or no, not how to dress, how, how to have your hair cut, and um, how every day part of your day goes, and and I within my rights as as a father to, to to do that, because I'm you know the the authority figure in your life now, uh, and I still have that power. Should I use it? That's like, that's a subjective thing, right? It's like within reason, I would say yes, but you know, just it's probably not. I I wouldn't agree with just to use it to make my life miserable or to ju rules just to have rules, right? And you know, so the 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 point is, I can make you do all the things that you know will cause me to believe that you love me but none of them will actually make you love me and in order for us to have a loving relationship then i'm gonna have to ease off on the things i could do and only do the things that are necessary to do to ensure my house runs the way i expect it to and you know some of that involves telling you to do things you don't want to do but sparingly and some of it involves not telling you to do things that I might prefer, but make no difference in how my house runs. So I'm not gonna, I'm, I'm not gonna fight that battle. Right. So that was part of what I was um, like in preparation for this episode was reading a bit, and like we've talked about this before, like like. With free will, you need to be able to choose to follow God with your free will. That way you can truly love God. Right. God loves you either way. That's a fact. But for you to love God, you need to be able to freely choose God. If you're forced to love someone, you're not loving them. Well, it, it, if you, then you're just forced to act like you love them. Right. You're not actually showing them love. Mm -hmm. So... God understands this, and um, it has no impact on his sovereignty or omnipotence that he chooses not to do certain things. Because as an omnipotent being, there's nothing he can't do. But in order for things to stay as he wants them to be, there are some things he chooses not to do on a regular basis, like blow up the sun. He could do it. <laughs> right. <laughs> but... He chooses to restrain that part of his power in order for the creation to carry on as, as he wants it to. And so that takes out, takes out of the omnipotence viewpoint. Now, the omniscience viewpoint, um, how, how could our free will be compatible with uh, his omniscience and his his all-knowing yes, his all-knowing nature. Right, and with that, it's like just because he knows something doesn't make he's mean he's making you do it. True, and I think that's the 
that's the, the, the one thing that everything seems to hinge on. I may be misunderstanding it, but, you know, it... Um, foreknowledge assumes agency. Does that make sense? Right. Um, and I was reading footnotes in my Bible mm-hmm. in preparation, and it says, um, let me get it. Uh, this is, um, some argue that when predicated of God, this is a special knowledge equivalent to election. Uh-huh. So, like, you know, his foreknowledge is equivalent to election was the argument that we face. So, because he knows he has elected, or because he knows he has chosen. Well, that's just nonsense. Well, I, to, in my opinion, like, that's... That doesn't make any, make any sense based on what I know about the world. That... Um, I have fantastic intuition as <laughs> Oh yeah, I, 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 as we've talked about. I don't think we've talked about the radar on the podcast no. like on screen. Right. But he's got this thing <laughs> you see. And it's like you know how people have vibes or feelings about something? He like gets them right like a lot of the time. Like it's creepy. So yeah, he he, he we call it the radar. So, so just because I can look at something and go, based on what I know about the world and a few intuitive leaps, this is what I think is going to happen. Uh, just because I'm right, you know, doesn't mean I wanted it to happen. Like, you know, I've had people who started relationships like, don't start that relationship. Why not? Because they're going to treat you this way, this way, and this way. And it's going to end this way. And that's exactly what happened. And... It was absolutely not what I wanted to happen. So right. In fact, you warned the person not to do it. Right, and so so you you can't say foreknowledge is agency, even if it's just you know an assumption prior to the fact. Once it becomes correct, I I foreknew what was going to happen, but I, that doesn't mean I elected for it to happen. Right, it's not that you chose that to happen. You, pretty right. sure it was. Right. I mean, and you know, quite simply, you know, if if you're in a helicopter and you see two cars about to collide, you know they're going to collide, most likely. But you didn't make them. Collide. But you didn't make them collide. Right. Um. So, or it wasn't your desire for them to collide. So, you know, th- th- things like that just don't don't bear out into my experience. Um, and, you know, so how much more for God? So if we have to have free will in order to actually love God, if that's kind of a requirement, we both agree that it is some level of free will. Let's not get into free will because that's a completely different. (laughs) Let's not go all the way down that rabbit hole. That's a a horrific, (laughs) horrific, deep and gnarly rabbit hole that we don't need to deal with today. Maybe, maybe a different time. But um, it's on some level we make our own choices, and because of that, and it's a gift from God, and because of that, sometimes we make choice. We we have to be able to make choices God doesn't want to happen, because He wants us all to love Him. And, Clearly, there are those that don't. Right. So when we're talking about God's sovereignty, what will ultimately happen to all of humanity, and to all of creation? That is God's sovereign will. What will ultimately happen? And there's nothing that we can do to subvert or change the ultimate end state. Right, but what happens just happens. Isn't necessarily, like, some things happen because nature sucks. Right. Some things happen because people suck. And I think there was a third one, but Um, I can't remember what it was. Oh, and some things happen because the devil sucks. Right. I mean, like, and I'm, like, even the, the, the devil can't remove free will. He can just, you know... Make it very difficult not to choose the thing, but um. Right, that, that kind of famous quote from uh, like in the Screw Tape letters. It's like people think it's what we whisper in their ears, but really it's what we get them not to do. That's not an exact quote, sure. But the gist is there, where it's like it's not what we tell you to do; it's what you, we get you to not do. Right. Um, Which is interesting. 
so and and that, that kind of tickles with the whole free will thing as well but um in natural evil um oh it's something someone else did or something you did mm-hmm. those are all got it yeah but so so there's god and the devil influence all three of those things to a certain extent but um you know th- those are the three main ways someone that the bad things happen to anybody right so uh, th- what what it comes down to is god has stayed the hand of his omnipotence in as much as it relates to our free will and if our free will does interfere with his sovereign will he he will still let us try to oppose it uh probably won't be successful right it's like a, it's like a dm in dungeons and dragons it's like can i do this you can certainly try exactly and that was um that's all tarot babble right there going way back right um, You're gonna try and do this. You can certainly try. And I mean, and, and God was like, "Well, they did it. Well, they started building it. I, well, I mean, they got it far enough that God's like, they're gonna finish it. Yeah, that's cool and all, but I'd rather they didn't. And you're do, and also you're that they were doing it for the wrong reasons. Well, they're absolutely doing it for wrong reasons. So. That's where it comes down to, um, you know, if you're actively trying to subvert God's will, once you go too far, God will be like, okay, but he never stopped you from trying. Right. Um, And that's basically how it goes. So, you know, you know, three aspects, omniscience, omnipotence, omnipresence. Um, the omnipresence is you don't really even have to be, you know, doesn't need to be part of this conversation because if, if you, you knock out the first two, the last one's not, not really, doesn't really have a, a, a factor. Um, so the, 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 the problem being God's sovereignty, no, no, whoever decides to get saved gets saved and it's not. And they can only be saved with the understanding that they can't do it on their own. Right. And um, that's said several times, even in Romans, where it's like uh, Romans uh, 9, uh, no, 8, 8, 32. Uh-huh. Uh, it, it says he, well, th- this isn't like you choose to be saved, but it sure. does say, you know, he did not even spare his own son, but offered him up for us all. Right. You know, later, where is it later? There we are. Um, Romans chapter 10, verse 9, If you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. And again, in Romans um, 10, verse 13, For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. And this is all in the same book that ha- holds the um, like one of the biggest verses in... Um, Defense of predestination, which is verses, uh, Roman, Romans eight verses twenty nine to thirty, for those who foreknew, uh, for those he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, so that he would be the firstborn among many brothers, and those he predestined, he also called, and those he called, he also justified, and those he justified, he also glorified. So it's one of those things like either. That ver- those two verses and the other three are contradictory, or we're not quite understanding this one. Um, I, I think it might be a translation problem. Right, and um, here, and in my footnotes, I'll read those as well. Okay. Because it goes into a bit more in depth to sure, try sure. and understand that. And we already talked about, you know, the whole for new thing. But let's read it. Paul assured his readers that God would accomplish his saving purposes for them. Paul listed five distinct distinct aspects of salvation, each building on the former. For new denotes possession of prior knowledge which humans or God may possess. God has previously known who his people will be. 
Some argue that when predicated of God, this is a special knowledge equivalence to election. The Hebrew knowing implies establishing an intimate relationship. So, what we already talked about. He, he knows, but that doesn't mean he chose. For us. For us. Right. Um... Well, uh, God knows his people in a special way. It is not certain Paul here intended for new to equal elect. Since we knew, since he knew and used terms for election elsewhere in Romans um, chapter 8, 33, 9, 11, 11, 5. Besides, how might God have had a special relationship with people before they even existed? In either case, certainly God intimately knows his church. Beyond God's foreknowledge of his people, he has predestined a general outcome for them, being conformed to the image of his Son, so that at his coming Christ will exult with his many brothers and sisters who bear his family resemblance. So God calls these his own people. And with predestination, so like you said, an ultimate goal mm -hmm. predestination is the general... Where did I, how do I write it? General, it's a general outcome for his people, right? Not for each individual person. It's the group of people that have come to right. love Christ, um, right? So that's that. That's the whole point, right there. I mean, that, that is one of the the biggest verses that they use to support um, predestination, and I'm just of, of the opinion that even if somebody because Paul describes people who taste and see that the Lord is good, come to know his love and salvation, and then turn away from it. Like, Paul describes those those types of people in one of the letters. I can't remember which one exactly. And so even Paul's like, no, you can fall away. But it, it's not something you do accidentally. Right. And we... Uh, um, Miss Stacy, Robbie, and I touched up on that in the last episode. Right. So, yeah, you you can lose it, but you have to want to lose it. Like with as much as you wanted to have it, you have to want to lose it. Right. And um, I think that's, there's nothing more tragic than that. But it it happens, and I think if if God really wants us to have free uh, really did give us free will, then that has to be a possible scenario that occurs. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the problems. Now, the problem with Arminianism, taking it too far, is um, the Unitarian Church, which eventually become the Unitarian Universalist Church in America, uses the probably corruption of the teachings of Arminius as the basis for, for their church. And that comes to whatever you choose to believe leads to God. Now we have a problem. Right. It's like, you know, living your life, there can be a lot of different ways that you come to meet Christ. As in, like, people come from different backgrounds and stuff. But that doesn't mean that any religion you follow leads to God. Right. I, I believe that there are nigh infinite ways to come to Christ or to find the path that leads to Christ. But if the path you're on doesn't end at Christ, you're on the wrong path. Right. And we we have to believe that because that's what Jesus said. Right. <laughs> I mean that's that's not you know, that that that's nothing we just pulled out of the air. That's Christ said, I am yeah. the way, the truth, and the light. And nobody gets to the Father except through me. Mm -hmm. So I'm not about the whatever path you're on is God and, you know, leads to the right place. Um, it only leads to the right place if it ends at Christ. So... Uh, our free will has its limits, and another, and one of the things is just because we choose to, um, I would say that just wanting to be saved is not enough. Oh, yeah, and like when Paul says, you know, confess with your heart and all that, it is, you know, you, it, not only do you say Jesus is Lord, because demons did that. Right. Uh, you also have to make him the 
Lord of your life. Yes, and that that's the part that well, it's kind of tricky to to quantify that. Right. Um, and so people don't really understand. Right. But but what what I can say is, if obedience to Christ is your goal, you're saved. Right. If it's even though you're not going to always be successful at completing that goal in every situation of your life. As long as that's what you, your intended goal is to submit your will to God's will, then you are saved. Right. That also goes back a little bit, like when we, like when you talked about the unapologetic homosexual pastors or whatever, unapologetic, whatever. The problem is that they are unapologetic about it. Right. It's not, hey guys, you know, even though I'm a pastor, I've struggled with this, so I understand what you're going through. It's, yes, I'm your pastor, yes, I'm this way, and God loves me anyway, and you're going to have to cope with it. Right. That's a different animal right? entirely. But with the, you know, have, uh, your goal has to be to follow Christ. Yeah, and your goal has to always be, in all of everything that you do, um, obedience to Christ and the glorification of God with your life. Right. Um, Which is also tied to, you know, you do act to show that you are saved, not to be saved. Um, it's not even that. I think that, I think it's more like you act, I act this way because I am saved. Like, no one else needs to know... Well, no one else's opinion on that matters, except God's, of how saved I am. Well, there's not degrees. <laughs> you, you are, you're not. Mm-hmm. And, um, but everything, all of that should be out of um, a love and gratitude to the one who gave it to you. Not to get the approval or, you know, the... Not so any man can sign off on your salvation. Right. But because God gave it to you and it's such an amazing thing, that is why you do these things. Mm-hmm. Um, and so in everybody's personal life, yours, mine, everybody's, you know, you look to Christ as your goal. As that that is where I want to be. And so I will always shoot to be there. Um, there's no reason to believe we'll get there, this side of heaven. But, you know, every day you wake up, you need to be looking to Christ for your behavior, for your thoughts, and um, well, what else What else is there? All there is is behavior and thoughts. What you think right. and what you do. Right. <laughs> it's like that is how you be. <laughs> yes, that is the only yeah. So that's um, that's that's the whole point is aim for Christ. Uh, to live like he did, to live like he says to live, um, to think like he thought. Mm-hmm. And uh, you can't do it on your own. You've got to depend on him for that right. the strength and empowerment to do that. But, you know, understanding that, you know, that submission and that, you know, seeking after him is, is, is part of obeying him. So, and, and that's, that's so, so salvation is one of those things that it's a process. Well, the salvation is, is an event, not a process. Sanctification is, what salvation does in your life. And if to be closer to God is not your goal, then you have to ask yourself, what did you even do when you chose to follow him? What, 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 what was your purpose in saying that you were saved if it was not to be more like Christ? Right. And to devote your life 
to bringing God glory through Christ. You know, if that's if that's that's not why you wanted to get saved, then you kind of need to reevaluate <laughs> how your faith is. Right. So, um, and if you're wondering if someone else is saved, you know, even you know, Paul said, you know, consider the fruit. You know, do you see joy in them? Are they peaceful? Are they patient? You know, are they gentle? Are they understanding? You know, all that stuff. And the more they exhibit those qualities, you know, the more effectively they are um, putting Christ at the center of their lives. And the more you exhibit those qualities, the more you are putting Christ at the center of your life. And you don't really need to worry about someone else's salvation. Occasionally, you need to worry about someone else's behavior. That makes sense. Because, I mean, their salvation is, like, is between them and God. Yeah, just like and yours is, yeah. Just like mine is. What you start need to start worrying about is the other person's behavior it's like because that's what you can be like hey what you're doing is not cool right it's like you say you want to be a christian but that is not what your behavior is implying like in fact there are very few things i can think of that you're doing that have anything to do with bringing god glory or, or obeying obeying him with uh, your Thoughts, deeds, thoughts and deeds. I always think there should be a third one. There's just not, though. <laughs> it's, at least we're not thinking of it right now. Like, I mean, like, but what else could there be? <laughs> right. I mean, everything, everything that a human being is, has is encapsulating what they think and what they do. Right. So, um... Because what you believe is also what you what think. What you think. So. Exactly. Thoughts and deeds, that's all. Thoughts and deeds. So it's like a t-shirt or some slogan or something. Uh, not cool enough yet. Not cool enough There's yet. There's potential. There's potential. But not. it's, it's, it's not, not cool enough. I don't know how to put a cool twang to it. <laughs> and this is not the time or the this place. This is not the time. No. <laughs> but that, that's, that's what I always say is, okay, there are very few things that can like bring growth to an absolute stop quicker than achieving a goal. Oh, dang. <laughs> right, because once, like, I, I, I know that when I hit something, I'm like, sweet! That's it. I'm done. Right. I did the thing. Exactly. When, you know, so, so it, it's hard to once you've achieved a goal to pick a new one and that's the the good thing about aiming for christ is that you're never gonna hit that goal right and so you're always working towards that goal and always growing closer to that goal even though you'll never right and 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 so that that that's a a, a recipe for infinite personal growth is aiming for christ but, I mean, there are things, you know, incrementally along the way. The only question you need to ask yourself, you know, as far as your progress is, am I more like Christ today than I was yesterday? And, you know, that's the only progress you need to be worried about. But a good thing is, you know, part of the whole thing is obedience to Christ is making, making disciples. So you're supposed to have help along the way you're supposed to help others along the way so it's not just you have to knock people out of the way so you can get to your goal the more people you help get to your goal the more you're getting closer to your goal <laughs> right so it's the opposite of a pyramid scheme <laughs> <laughs> right and um yeah because now that i've grown more in my faith i'm able to talk more about my faith like on a podcast maybe <laughs> but you know and I'm able to 
talk about this thing with other people and help them understand my God and what, you know, I believe in my faith. Right. And not only that, but, you know, the times that you've been obedient and you've seen God work and, um, you know, the things that you've experienced, um, while not scientifically relevant, can be relevant to somebody you're talking to. Right. Right. Because uh, and we, we've, I, I talked about this in the ground through adversity thing. Um but like my middle school experience, especially sixth grade, a year of change and death. <laughs> right. Um, I was able to talk about that with someone else and, you know, help them a little bit. So it's like, you know, fellowship right. helping, you know, with discipleship and stuff. Right. Because of who you are, you know, God does have work for you. Right. And, um... Only by growing closer to him and getting to know him better can you hear his voice. Right. But we've just been talking. We we have talked about this in the past, so I'm not going to you know get on on that soapbox again or chase. Okay. Not going to chase that rabbit again. Um. So there's a balance between. Um. Your free will determines whether or not you're uh, a Christian or doing the right, seeking God correctly, you know, and you have no free will and God has already chosen who he's going to choose. Right, it, it's, it's taking a little bit from both sides and coming to the middle where um, it's, you know, you have to confess with your mouth and say Jesus is Lord and also obey God. Right. You know, it's not just that you said it. It's not just that God said it. It's that you said it and you follow what God said. Well, right, because... Having faith in Christ means you believe what he said. Right. You believe who, who he said he was. He is who he said he was. And therefore, you believe he knows how the kingdom of heaven is supposed to work. And he told us. Right. So you, 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 you can't say, oh, yeah, Jesus is Lord. I'm going to do whatever I want, though. Well, right. wait. Well, then what is, how is Jesus Lord? If you're doing whatever you want. Right. <laughs> so. How, how, how are you following Christ when you're doing whatever you want? Just like, when are you following the rules when you will do whatever you want? Exactly. At any turn. You know, if you happen to be following the rules when you're doing what you want, what you want are you really following the rules? Or just doing what you want. To just doing what you want. Right. Which is, it's that. You're doing what you want. You just happen to be within the rules. Right. Um, un until you're, you, you make the very concerted effort in your life, I want what God wants. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's, that's when your free will becomes doing the will of God, you know, because you're, you're making the choice, I want what God wants for my life, rather than what I would think would be fun right now so complicated stuff right but that's what we talk about on the 832 podcast you're not wrong <laughs> you're not wrong so yeah um once saved always saved um i'm gonna call that to the best of my understanding misleading right um, right because there's some extra context to that we might not even necessarily call it 100% false, but misleading because it's the, it misses the context of until you throw it away, right? Until you unaccidentally, on purpose, you know, say I don't want to be with you anymore, God. Then you lose it because then God's respecting your decision, sending you to the one place He's not, right? Which happens to suck. Yeah. And, you know, if you've you know, made that decision and then um, are continuing to live your life the same way you did before you made the decision, then what I can say is you're missing out on God's best for you and that you have missed the point of salvation, which is to not only be covered in Christ's likeness through a sacrifice in his blood, which is the only way to get to heaven, but to actually 
behave as someone who is clothed in Christ's righteousness. You know, it's like, you've just been made a prince of heaven. Why are you acting like the scum of the earth? <laughs> right. And like, that's an interesting, like that. that's one of those coach talks. It's like, you're better than this. Act like it. <laughs> right. Know? It's like, the, it's like, I feel like garbage, but you're right. Uh, <laughs> well, there's... <laughs> that doesn't make me feel good what you just told me. Right. To be better. But you're right. Yeah. It's, 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 it's a lot more people need, need to, to hear. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm not a huge fan of self-esteem affirmations. Oh, right. You're perfect. Just the way you are. You're beautiful. Love I, yourself. <laughs> When someone tells me I'm perfect just the way I am, it's like, you do not know me. <laughs> <laughs> right. It's like, you clearly have no idea who I am. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I mean, for, spiritually speaking, I've been made perfect through Christ's sacrifice. Right. Um, but that's only because of what he did and it's not because of you definitely not because of me and even though i have been made perfect doesn't mean that i am free of the flesh completely right i'm okay let me rephrase that right so that, that makes will, sense to me but i will always that doesn't mean i will always choose to be free of the flesh we are free of it okay we have been freed from all sin by the blood of christ but we don't always choose to be free of it Sometimes we choose to go back into bondage or, you know, to do the things we did when we were in bondage because they're comfortable, because they're familiar. But that being said, um, no, nobody's perfect the way that they are. That's or, why we need, if, if we were, why would we need Jesus? Exactly. You know, I think it's a lot more constructive, beneficial to tell somebody, you are not who you could be. Right. And you know that. Mm -hmm. And what are you going to do about it? With God's help. Right. Which, I mean, that that's like a conversation we've had. Right. You know, it's like, it's like, here's the thing. What are you going to do about it? And it's like, well. <laughs> okay. Go do that. Right. Um, but that's... It, it does tie in. Um, salvation is not the end point. It's the beginning. <laughs> I think that's a, that's a, that's an interesting point that we don't necessarily hear all the time. I like I I, I I've talked about this like um, Papa Bruce. Mm -hmm. You know the cycle of discipleship. You know, if you being saved is the first part. Right. And then it goes around to someone else being saved. Right. Right. So. No, it, 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 exactly. Um, that, that, that's the, the biggest mistake even churches make sometimes in the way they treat it is that salvation is the end state. Okay, here's your Bible. Have fun. <laughs> Woo. Where it's like, by what Jesus Christ himself said, this person has just been reborn. Right. Which means they're babies. <laughs> right. And you don't just like <laughs> pop. All right. Here you go. Go live your life. Yep. Go on. Here's some meat. But wait. Wait a second. I don't even have teeth. Right. <laughs> so, yeah, that's, that's the most important part is it's the beginning. Right. Of the journey of the Christian, not not the end. Right. Uh, Pilgrim's Progress, you know, is a whole allegory on that. And as I understand it, and it literally starts off with, you know, you know, he he st he believes in this thing, mm -hmm. and then he goes through this journey. It's right. not all right. I believe in this thing. 
Right. And then that's the story. No, it's a thick book of lots of things that I just don't fully understand because allegory and stuff. And I also haven't read through it all the way, like not even halfway. So, but I've, I've heard what it's supposed to be an allegory. Literally one of the um, characters is named faith or faithful. Right. So, you know, these aren't people, they're symbols and stuff. Sure. Yeah. But yeah, the whole the whole point is, um, too many people see salvation as the end. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm saved now. I'm, I'm good. Wait, whoa, 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 whoa. Then what's the point of, like, the Great Commission and stuff? Right. Exactly. Um, if once you're saved, whatever, then what's the point of the Great Commission? And I mean, that's another problem with once saved, always saved, taken to its furthest right, t- of taken, absurdity. Yeah, taken to the furthest extent, it's like... Then what's the point of evangelism? Right, and I, I think I wrote that down. Yeah. Down here. It, um, it It's not really a sustainable, like, effective strategy. So if it doesn't work, like, if you can't live that way, it's not a... I don't think it's a good theology if it can't be part of your life. But, you know, always seek after Christ um, out of gratitude and love for him, for what he's done for you. That's something you can always use. And um, believing in him and knowing that there's nothing you can do to earn heaven is the first step. Right. Except believing in him. And... To kind of tie everything back together, you know, sum up the episode. It's predestination. Basically, God chose before creation who's going to be saved and who's not going to be saved. Armenia did... Yeah, that one. That one. Um, as I've understood it with the episode, just, you know, just saying you believe in God, you're good. Really... It's in the middle where you have to believe, you have to say that um, Christ is Lord, and you have to believe what God said, which was, you know, what the Bible says. Right. And what it what it really comes down to with Arminianism, like it is based on that, I'm going to agree more with that than the Calvinism for the, for the most part. On this question. Yeah. Is... Um, And you threw me off when you threw when you threw threw in the, the, the on this question. Um, salvation is not unconditional. God's right. love. God's love is unconditional. Mm-hmm. His salvation is not. Because salvation is a relationship with Him, an intimate relationship with God, and so to enter into any relationship, there are conditions, and the conditions are. Believe it and live it. Think it and do it. Think it and do it. <laughs> there we go. Is that our t-shirt? Think uh, it and do it. No. Salvation. Think it and do it. You know, we're getting, we're, getting we're, getting, somewhere. we're getting somewhere. We're getting somewhere. We're getting somewhere. But, uh, but you have to at least take the step. Right. It's like, it's not a work per se because it's literally admitting you can't do the thing that God's going to do for you. But it's still a step you have to take. So it's kind of... You obviously don't save yourself. Because you admit that you can't save yourself. And um, on the flip side of that coin... Uh, you deciding you need... God to save you, you know, it has to be a decision that you make. So, there we are. That's one of those crux of mysteries that it's hard to work out. Is you say I'm only saved by faith, but faith is a choice, and so that's kind of a work. It's like. And? Yes. <laughs> but it's only believing that only. God can save you through Christ. Right. 
So. Right. That's the only believing part. Right. Even demons say, even the devil says, Jesus is the son of God. True. So now what are you going to do about it? Oof. <laughs> at least for, that resonates for me, at least. Right. You know, it's like, what are you going to do about it? It's like, what's the action? What's the thing? And that, that just really helps with, you know, head. It's like, you know. But yeah, with that, you know, those final words, would you like to pray for, pray us out? Sure, sure. Uh, dear God, you're just an amazing father and a loving God. And we, we praise you for that. And um, thank you for saving us um, through the body of your son, Jesus Christ, and empowering us to live as he did. Uh, Lord, help us use that power. Help us to accept that enabling uh, to truly mimic Christ in our lives. Um, regardless of how we get saved or what the point is, Lord, help us to uh, walk in obedience and grow closer to you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen.